Hello there. Thanks a lot for coming by PosterCentral.com's video blog today. I'm Pete Howard. And boy, today, here's a concert poster for the Velvet Underground before they'd ever released a single record, either album or 45. The beginning of summer 1966, when they were an important part of their managers, he being Andy Warhol, exploding plastic inevitable. What's ironic is that this is a very non-psychedelic, 14 by 22 inch cardboard window card, boxing style, telephone pole, you know, whatever you want to call it, for two weeks worth of shows at Poor Richard's in Chicago. But, you know, as boxers go, this one is pretty fun. I think it's really nice. This orange and black is really cool with the added color of the yellow strip on there. I think it's got a lot of charisma. It's really nice. And, uh, of course, Mr. Warhol was the star, but this is a concert poster blog, so naturally I will focus on the Velvets. So this two-week stand here was mostly in the month of June. It started June 21 through June 26, and then held over for another week. Well, just the month before, in May, the Velvet Underground had recorded three very key tracks for their first album. I'm Waiting for the Man, Venus and Furs, and Heroin. Then in late May, they appeared at San Francisco's Fillmore Auditorium. That's a big gig, advertised by this poster, which I'm sure you'll recognize. Here's an image of it, of course. This is known as BG-8, and I have video blogged both the handbill and the poster before, but notice the colors. Yes, just like poor Richard's, it is orange and black. And then starting on June 21st, you do have this engagement in Chicago. And then in July, the following month, the Velvets released their debut single, All Tomorrow's Parties and I'll Be Your Mirror, on Verve Records. So, taking this from the top, you got Poor Richards up there, Presents. Poor Richards was in Chicago's Old Town, and it says that at the bottom of the poster, a poorly ventilated old church that often reached, ouch, 100 degrees inside. Woo! Then you've got Andy Warhol and his exploding plastic inevitable with show, in parentheses, probably a pretty key word because, well, it wasn't on the Fillmore poster where people were used to freakiness in San Francisco, but otherwise people perhaps in the Midwest and stuff, just if they just saw exploding plastic inevitable, they'd go, what's that, you know? Well, you know, as you know, it was, of course, War Warhol's traveling psychedelic review with, you know, dizzying strobe lights and visuals. Andy's slides and films being projected everywhere, certainly the hippest people in town present, and the Velvet Underground serving as the house band, much like the Grateful Dead and the acid tests out west. And that uh, is emphasized by the line that says the new sound of the Velvet Underground, so people couldn't complain if they didn't like the sound, the poster told you it was brand new stuff. Interestingly, these two weeks in Chicago at Poor Richards were marked by a number of absences. For example, Andy Warhol himself didn't show up. Instead, he sent a surrogate, uh, Bridget Berlin, one of his actresses in his short films and a key member of his entourage. And the Velvet's Lou Reed. Heavens, he was laid up with hepatitis back in New York. So John Cale and Sterling Morrison handled the vocals. Now, you know, you and I might think that's a huge letdown, right? But, boy, I can almost guarantee at the time that very few people noticed or cared. I mean, people just wanted to show up, trip out, with or without LSD, and just have a good time. There was no serious rock journalism yet. The band had never released a record, so who was Lou Reed, you know? I'm telling you, the Midwest especially, I shouldn't say the Midwest and specify them, the youth culture of America was just starved for cutting-edge pop culture. So when something like this comes along, it's like, yeah, let's go, and, and again, we're not going to miss a band member or two. Now, another person skipping the proceedings for this gig was Nico. She was definitely advertised, but she chose to stay in the island resort of Ibiza, where she was. And um, how do I know she was advertised? Well... This thing, this yellow stripe here, is called a snipe. And a snipe with posters, they can be movie posters or circus posters or anything, is a pasted over updated information strip on any poster. Well, luckily, I have an image of this poster before the snipe was put on. Yep, here's an image of a real poster, not a bootleg, although it is a slightly different color, almost yellow and black. But there she is, Nico, pop girl of 66. 
And in the same area, it also says June 21st through June 26th. But you know, everybody by all accounts was having such a great time and it was so successful that it was held over for another week, even without its three stars. I'm telling you, that's because the scene was the star, just like out in San Francisco. There was very little distance at this time between the performers and the audiences. And as I said, the youth culture of America was just starved for exciting new adventures. And so something like this just did really well, did really well when it came to town. And below the snipe there, notice poor Richard's address. Boy, does anybody else get the irony here? That's funny. They were on North Sedgwick. <laughs> Edie Sedgwick had been a major Andy Warhol it girl. I think she was like the pop girl of 65. And then lastly, check out the show times in the lower right. 10 p.m., 12 p.m. No, there was no lunch show. They meant 12 a.m. And 2 a.m. Wow, a show starting at 2 a.m.? <laughs> now that's hip. <laughs> oh, man. Oh, I love this stuff. Thanks a lot for dropping by today. Good to see you, and I look forward to seeing you for the next thing soon. Take care. Bye-bye.